There is no such thing as hate speech, only speech you hate. All right, mate, it's Madigan. One thing will become abundantly clear if you watch any of my videos and basically why I decided to start this channel is that I despise the corporate media. I pretty much put uh, nearly all the responsibility on their shoulders for why we are so torn as a society at the moment because it all stems back, in my opinion, to the time that an orange man decided to come down a golden escalator and say, I'm running for president. Ever since then, they've lost their minds and just basically went on a tear to declare everyone who disagrees with them as either a racist, a sexist, a misogynist, or whatever ist or phobe that you can think of. So every now and then, somebody from the corporate media gets a bit of a smackdown, and I'm all here for it. The most recent one happened to the BBC and James Clayton decided that he would interview Elon Musk and it's just brilliant. And I thought we should watch and laugh along because I just enjoyed this so much. So much so that why not? Let's have a beer and enjoy this one together, shall we? Tasty. Here we go. Uh, I mean, I would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, what hate that you speech are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, but just a personal anecdote, like what do you do? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to jump in and out of this, but just make sure you pay attention to exactly what he just said there. He says, for my, for you, I see a rise. Okay, note that. Yeah, personally, but I, I'm not going to talk to, talk to the rest of, for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally? I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content point. you don't like or or hateful what do you mean to describe a hateful thing yeah i mean you know just content that will solicit a, a reaction something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist those kinds of those kinds of things so you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist it should be banned i no, is I'm that not, what you're saying i'm not saying anything i'm saying well, i'm just curious what you, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content and i'm asking for specific examples um and if and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's what I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't need, I, 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 honestly, I you don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you. Okay, do you see that? Right away, he's just been caught out in a lie, which Elon will point out. At the beginning where I said stop and pause and make a note of this, that he says, when I use my For You tab, I'm seeing a rise in hate speech. And already in the space of less than a minute and a half, he now says, I don't use it. Like you can see the NPC wheel turning around as he's desperately asking for his overlords for an update on what he's supposed to say feed anymore because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you said actually, a lot of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only, well, well, I only look well, at hang my, on a second. My you said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I, then I how did you see the hateful content content? Because I've been, I've been using, I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay. So then you must have at some point seen that you, for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, and, and I'm saying, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con of content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed, you just lied. What? No, no. What I claim was uh, there are many uh, organisations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it. And now here he goes. Now he's saying that he's getting the information from elsewhere. So. He knows he's been caught in a lie, so the MPC update has downloaded finally, and they say, point to another source that says that this is on the rise. This is totally disingenuous. 
has a Give me one example. Arts. I mean, I, right, and Literally, if you, you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK, they will say that. So you, they, Look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? Then, that I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I, That's haven't, absurd. I, haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know there's hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We, have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, wow. COVID misinformation. <laughs> you Amazing. Changed, you changed the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed this COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. Again, the NPC wheel is spinning really, really hard because he knows people who are in this corporate media, they, they, they just know certain talking points. And the interview starts off with him with the talking point of hate speech. And now he's, now he's moved on to COVID where he's trying to, uh, trying to get in that uh, somehow Elon is now responsible for the rise in COVID rates. I don't know what he's trying to uh, uh, assign to Elon here. Because Elon decided, you know what, all these COVID misinformation labels and all that sort of stuff was bollocks. And yet Elon is 100% right here with pointing out that BBC banged on with actual misinformation and disinformation, what I would just call outright lies. And, he, and, he, and that wheel is turning. He can't handle it. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Has asking you about, you change the labels, the COVID misinformation labels. There used to be a policy and then... It then disappears. Why do that? Look, okay, COVID is no longer an issue. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government? to change the editorial policy. Are you aware of that? This is, a, this is not an interview about the BBC. <laughs> oh, you thought it wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> and this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's talk about something else. You want I'm to talk about the BBC. All right, let's, let's, let's talk. All right, and that's basically where it wraps up. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I haven't seen a smackdown like that since Kathy Newman. You remember Kathy when she interviewed Jordan Peterson? So what you're saying is, what's going on recently, Kathy? Oh, that's right. You blocked me. Oh, Kathy, why? So then the BBC went on a... Uh, so what this is all about is the fact that um, the BBC recently, <laughs> amongst a whole bunch of others, got a label from Elon as government-funded media. And for some reason, the truth has left them all butthurt. That they've now got a little label on their uh, on their um, on their Twitter feeds, saying that they're uh, the government funded. Like, why would they be upset about that? That's actually the truth. And Elon, if you're watching too, dude, uh, please, please, all the ABC uh, Twitter accounts here in Australia, they all need the same thing. I would personally put it down as taxpayer funded government propaganda, but that's just me. Um, so afterwards the, the BBC went into damage control as well after this. So like the, like the beginning of the whole thing was about hate speech, hate speech, hate speech. And again, I say there is no such thing as hate speech. There is just speech you hate. And everyone's trying to point out, oh, this word is on the rise and that word is on the rise. And the thing is, I can point out the fact that other words are on the rise. And when I point out the fact that the other words are on the rise as well, I'm told that those words aren't as equal as the other ones. So I don't care about what you label as hate speech. So the BBC World Twitter account uh, posted this. Where is the evidence of hate speech on Twitter? I'm not going to read this because they just basically uh, try to, uh, you know, do some damage control. Where again, all they do is just point out, well, this word's on the rise and that word's on the rise. You know, so they could sit there and say that sexism is on the rise against females, but I can sit there and I can point out to you that the fact that there's a whole bunch of anti-male sentiment on Twitter as well has been so for quite a while. 
but I'll be told that that's not sexism. So I just don't care. So my response to this was, your journalist got owned, take the L. And I'm just going to point out this, uh, this, this reply because I find it fascinating that people don't understand what journalism is all about. So this person, Baru, responds to me, you seem to be confused. Elon agreed to an interview where a reporter asks the questions. It's no, I'm assuming it's not a debate, where you ask reporters surprise questions to look cool or own then. Uh, dude, if you go into an interview with a reporter and they start making spurious or uh, inaccurate uh, allegations against you, you're in your total right to push back and say, uh, excuse me, you're wrong. Where is your evidence? Baru, it would be like if I sat there and asked you, when did you stop rapaying your mother? Are you supposed to just sit there and go, well, he says I rapaid my mother. I guess I am a rapayer of my mother. No, you would push back, you utter moron. Oh, God, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I, I've That just, you know, every now and then there's a couple of little white pills that pop into our into our society, you know, with all the, the with all the dark stuff that's coming around, and to see a BBC journalist journalist get owned like that, oh, it just warms my heart. And no, look, you know, and the first thing that people will throw at me is that I'm some sort of you know Elon simp. No, I just like the fact that he's that there's somebody. It could have been anyone who has uh, taken over Twitter. It could have been any billionaire. If Rupert Murdoch took over Twitter and um, took it back open and made it bloody uh, a free speech wing again, I would be praising Rupert Murdoch. Uh, I can't think of any other. Uh, what's his name? Who owns Amazon? What's that loser's name? Uh, Jeff Bezos. If Jeff Bezos did that and opened up Twitter so everyone could speak freely again, I would praise him. It's got nothing to do with Elon specifically. It's the fact that Elon has decided to open up Twitter for free speech again and losers like uh, Clayton from the BBC uh, are losing their mind because they're with them having no power to control Twitter anymore, it means they get pushed back just like what Elon did and they cannot handle it and I am all here for it. I am loving it. All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the video. Thanks very much for checking out the channel. You can find me just by searching at the Brian Madigan. I'm on all those platforms listed there. Don't forget there are audio-only versions of these episodes as well, so if you don't have time to watch, you can always just listen. Just search at the Brian Madigan on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Leave a five-star review. I would really love it. Uh, hopefully, I earned a subscription for this video. I would really appreciate it if I did. If not, just leave a like and please, you know, leave comments too. I'd love to know what you think. All right, are we done? Yeah, we're done.